So, first attempt at doing a preview on this channel, I think. No, I lie. I did a preview for the Newcastle Sunderland game like two seasons ago. Anyway, Ben is with us now. So, Ben, how are you doing, mate? You alright? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Good. Well, at least someone seems chirpy enough. Um, I don't, whether we are after Saturday come five o'clock, I don't know. Anyways, um, uh, obviously just me and Ben just going to talk and waffle on for a bit. Ben will talk, I'll probably talk shite. And we'll just talk, well, preview Saturday really against Bristol City at the Stadium of Light. And we'll probably try and look ahead a little bit to the Bolton game because a lot has been built up around these two home fixtures, but particularly Bolton um, on Tuesday, regardless of what happens at the weekend. Uh, I'll quickly get Ben's opinion though on the 3-3 draw against Brentford because me and Pete obviously did um, a reaction to it on the channel pretty much almost after the game ended. Um, am I correct in saying you watched the game? Yeah, I did watch the game, yeah. Right, not by, uh, means, not by means we'll talk about on here, but nevertheless, what are your thoughts on the Brentford game? Yeah, I mean, first half, um, you know, get, getting the three goals was excellent to see. Um, obviously grabbing back inside. Um, he shows he can score goals. But he's going to be pivotal this season, really, to us stopping in the championship. Agreed. Um, <laughs> and Oviedo as well. I mean, he played well in the first half. I mean, the goal was very rugby, but you know, he probably he probably deserves it on his performances. He's probably one of our better performers. But you know, again, Rearson's decisions shot in the second half, bringing off McGeady, bringing off Watmore. I know Watmore's just come back. But, you know, we needed mm. something going forward. And uh, we really just didn't turn up in the second half. Um, obviously, conceding straight after half-time is a big issue. I mean, uh, uh, Steele, I don't know what he was doing for the second goal. I mean, it was on his side, clearly. And if he can't see the ball, uh, that's his problem. Because he's the one, you know, putting, putting the wall in place. Yeah. And, and the third one, that ball for me was at fault. Letting uh, the guy who scored drift in. And that happened all year, to be honest, Mike. The, the guys were getting in behind Endong and Catamore. Endong was doing two people's jobs, really. Um, Catamore, for me, is a uh, runner of steam. I think he should be dropped on Saturday. And yeah, unlucky deflection, but really disappointed now. In the build-up to it. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. I was going to say, well, obviously, I've had, I've said my piece on Catamull. I mean, I'm still a Catamull fan, but I must admit, if he's continuing to play this poorly time after time after time, then there comes a point where you've got to sort of drop him. And, and, it, and it could do, I said this to Pete, but um, after the match, on the post-match reaction we did, uh, that it might do Catamull the world of good. But you never know. Something tells me Grayson isn't going to drop him, or in Dong. Um, okay, well, we'll look ahead to this weekend's game. And... If I'm wrong, Bristol City fans, if there's any of you watching, feel free to comment below and tell me that I'm wrong. But I've been trying to look at Bristol City's form going into this game and take Leeds out. I think Leeds is the only game they've lost since the start, of, since almost the start of the season. They lost 2-1 against Birmingham in August. I don't think they've lost a game since then, but I may very well be wrong on that. And obviously in the Cup, they hammered Palace on Tuesday night. Uh, and they beat, they've actually beaten three Premier League teams to get the quarterfinals. Obviously they're playing Manchester United. Uh, they beat Watford away. Um, Watford, I think, at that point would have prioritised staying in the Premier League, so it would have been a reserve team, but you can't take that away from them. They've beat Stoke 2-0, and then obviously Hammered Palace 4-1. So, um, yay. They're going into it in form, and I believe they've also got a key player who was sent off against Leeds, but I think they've successfully appealed that suspension, if I'm right. So, uh, yeah, things are looking really up on Saturday. Fantastic. So, Ben, how would you feel going into... Uh, the Bristol City match in itself? Um, I feel fearful, um, just for our back four, really. We're, we're, Fair enough. We don't, have any, we don't have any cohesive tactics um, at the back four and goalkeeper positions at the moment, do we? Going forward, I, I really am quite confident. We sco we've started scoring more goals. Um, now grabbing in the side and what more in the side. Um, but of course, at the back, that's where our problems lie. And I think that might come um, as no surprise for Bristol City. And mm. They'll target that. Yeah, I've got no doubt about it. Any, but pretty much any team that comes up against Sunderland, I've always said, I said this on Twitter once. I think all you really need to do to play against us is just play a couple of big lads up front, um, get a couple of big lads in defence because we half the time we play hoofball rather unsuccessfully, and just get the first goal really. And then you've, you've at worst you've got a draw, and in nine times out of ten you've got the three points. So. And obviously, with the Stadium of Light being a, albeit an almost toxic place to play at the minute, 
that's going to be playing into Bristol City's hands at the moment, based and certainly based on current form anyway. What I was going to ask you as well, actually, is what your thoughts are on the previous three games. Because if you're going to, and I said this after the Brentford game, if you put your really red and white tinted spectacles and really positive delusional caps on, it's three games unbeaten. But that doesn't really say much when you're second bottom of the league, does it? No, it doesn't. And, you know, the last three games, three draws, unbeaten, you could say, if you're looking at a, on a positive note. Mm. Uh, but I, I wouldn't mind taking point, a point away from home. It's the home games that really annoy me. Um, especially when QBR came up and they, they were the worst side I've saw at Stadium like this season. And we couldn't take three points off them. And that was a really frustrating game. Mm. But when we're not winning at home, we've got to start taking three points away. And it's just yeah. not happening. And um, I mean, Bristol City sitting seven. Going to be a hard one this weekend. But you know, the, you look at you look at the uh, teams above them. Norwich is above them. We've beat them this season, so mm. I, I will only win this season so far. So yeah, there's that's always, it. There's always that hope, isn't there? There it's is. The that, it's the hope that kills you. It really is for this club. Otherwise, you just have to keep the faith. Not trying to link it to the name of the pod that we do on here, but regardless. Um, yes, I would. I'd agree certainly on the point that you, if, if we're not going to win at home, we have to start picking up points away. I mean, we need to start picking up points either way, whichever game, wherever it is, we need to start getting wins. I think my only disab- I think against Brentford, I think that the the thing that was annoying me was that Grayson said after the game that possibly before the game you would have taken a point. I can sort of see why he said that before the match, but obviously. I'm um, sorry, a 3-3 draw when you're 3-1 up is a, is a horrendous result, regardless of who it's against. Even if it was against, like, say, one of the Manchester clubs, I would still say it's disappointing because you should really see that game out. And Pete was... I, I want to see what you think of this. When Pete basically said... Pete said on the on the reaction that going 3-1 up, especially getting the third before half-time, going two goals up, any other team, that would kill them. That would be them gone. But because it's Sunderland who are 3-1 up, if you, if I said at half time, don't let them, don't concede the start of the second half, and look what happened straight away. And as soon as we let the second in, I knew we weren't going to win. Yeah, it's it's such a typical Sunderland thing to do, really. I mean, the, the point I would make is if it was the other way around and Brentford were beating us three one on the stadium of light, there would be no comeback. No, if anything, it would just be like four five one at least. Yeah, more so, if not be. if not more so, to be honest. Yeah, I would I would agree with that point, and that's. It goes back to the problem, really, and this is the problem we need to address, certainly in the next two games, but I think especially, I mean, Saturday's a huge game anyway, but I think Bolton as well. I mean, we, we've simply got, in order to win a game now, we've got to score the first goal. And I suppose, again, on a positive, you could look at the fact that in each of the last three games, we've been behind and sort of come back to get something. You look against Preston, OK, we were 1-0 up, and I was still disappointed that we had to rescue a point from being in a winning position in the first place. But we came back to get a draw. We came back against QPR. And albeit we, it feel, the Brentford game would feel like a defeat, at the end of the day, we came from 1-0 down to be leading 3-1. So make of that what you will, but we can't keep affording to give opposition's head start. And let's not remind ourselves, we are still without a clean sheet this season. Yeah, I think that's a huge problem, isn't it? The back four. I mean... <laughs> Cornea hasn't turned up for the last what twelve months now. Something like Probably that. A bit longer. Uh, or Shea, you know, he he's getting on now. I mean, he's probably our best defender at this point, or our best centre back. Doesn't so, take much, does uh, it? But I know what no. you mean. <laughs> no, I was saying it doesn't take much to be our best centre back at the minute. But I know where you're coming from, certainly. Uh, and you look at the full backs. I mean, Oviedo. Yeah, I like him. He's a for me. He's a Premier League player. Yeah, I'd agree with that. For me. Um, Jones, uh, I can give or take Jones and Matthews. Yeah. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of they've got their detractors, they're haven't they? Great. They're not great. Both of them aren't great. They're not, they're not. Yeah, they're not. Um, but I wouldn't say either of them are bottom three championship fullbacks either. I think they're certainly both. That's the thing, because actually, funny enough, when you mentioned Adam Matthews, because if I remember rightly, he was on loan at Bristol City last season. But barely, but but barely played. He barely played like six games for them, and we don't even know if they were sub appearances as opposed to starts. Um, so I, I don't know what to make of that one. I don't know whether Matthews will be more up for this game more than any, depending, depending if he actually starts. Um, you mentioned the back four there, which certainly is is obviously the concern for me. But I mean, you've got Coney that I, I, I'm not going to keep banging on about Coney because I've said loads of times my opinion isn't going to change. I still believe out of all the players in the team, Coney is the one that's underperforming the most because we've seen what he actually can do when he can be asked. 
But obviously, you can't ignore the fact he hasn't had, hasn't basically turned up for like 14 months. Um, you've got O'Shea, and yeah, albeit uh, I don't, I can give or take John O'Shea. I think certainly in the championship he should be coping enough. It says a lot when he's like 36, 37 years old, and we're relying on him basically to see us through the shit. Um, what well, I was going to lead on to the next point for me rambling again. The next point I was going to bring up was um, obviously leading on to Grayson. Grayson is safe to say over the last few weeks, uh, the stick for Grayson and the pressure on Grayson has been increasing. It's been building increasingly, and there's lots of people now that are on the bandwagon of Grayson out. There's lots. Of, there's a couple of people I've seen that have had the opinion I've previously had, where you want to give him time, give him time, give him time. Um, I think I think Ben stated in the past that you you feel a manager change is needed, whereas I'm I'm give or take on Grayson at the moment. So why don't you try your campaign to try and persuade me to be Grayson out? I'm curious to see what you say here. Yeah, um, I, as I said last year, actually I was quite you know pro Moyes throughout most of the season, like you were. Um, the thing that's putting me off Grayson at the moment is. You know, he comes out in the press and he says different. He's kind of bipolar in the sense that one day he's saying we should be going for promotion, and the next day he's saying, you know, we're not too good to go down. That's yeah. starve of relegation. Mm. So that makes me think his aims and objectives aren't quite clear. He doesn't know what his best eleven is, and you know, we're thirteen games into the season mm. now, and, and we that's haven't. A real, that's a real problem mm. because if you look at the sides around us and they consistently start the same eleven, and they're the teams who are doing well. They're the teams who are starting to pull themselves out of the shit. And, that, and you know what? That, that's why I wouldn't have him now. And, you know, the comment um, when he... He had a sly comment at the fans, didn't he? At uh, Ipswich on the court Tuesday night. And that was that was a real shame yeah. because I think our fans deserve a lot better. I would um, I, w- I would quickly interrupt and say that uh, that comment was slightly taken out of context, but at the same time, I do admit that I think it, I did say at the time I thought it was a stupid thing for him to say because it was always going to be interpreted the wrong way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, he played himself into the press's hands there, mm. to be honest. Um, and yeah, I, I just I just think he's not getting the best out of the players that, he, that he's been given. I really don't. Mm. I think there's managers out there who could get, a, a, you know, more respect. And Pete was saying early, um, earlier this week, Kevin Ball and Kevin Phillips. And yeah, I would, I would quite happily let them go on. And I think they would demand the respect that's needed. Um so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm quite firmly on the grace note. Fair enough. Um, like I said, I was give or take because, to me, if we don't win at the weekend and we then either draw or lose to Bolton, I would probably shift to grace and out. And that's a, such a shame, really, because there's a couple of things I will say on it. The first thing is, I understand why managers turn the job down in the summer. But I have huge respect for Grayson for not taking the easy option of staying away from Sunderland and actually giving it a go. I don't think McInnes or Monk, albeit you could argue they made the sensible choice, which is fair enough. But I don't think I'd... People, put it this way, people have said Grayson doesn't have enough faith in his own managerial ability to sort things out. Where, or what was it? Something along those lines. Well, neither does McInnes or Monk quite clearly because neither of them decided to take the job. Um, but at the same time, I can't ignore the fact we're second bottom in the league. And, how, and I'm sure Ben will agree with me on this. No matter how bad people seem to think our squad is, for this league, for this league in comparison to a lot of other teams, it isn't shit. I'm sorry. This squad should not be anywhere near the position it's in. And the fact that we're second bottom, the fact we're not even looking like in contention for promotion, not even mid-table, is a failure at the minute. Um, and Grayson has yeah, to... Do, and Grayson has yeah, to, I agree with you, yeah. Yeah, Michael. Sorry to interrupt. No, go on. That, that, that team should, should be competing. It should be competing in the mid-table quite comfortably. You look, you look at our, you know, it's 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 really a team full of half decent championship players and some really, you know, just off the cuff Premier League players, really. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And, and, and you're looking at the teams who were around Paul and the League One, the League One team, really. When you look at their squad, you know, but again, really. Yeah, players. Barnsley, yeah, Barnsley were tipped. Yeah, yeah, Barnsley's yeah. another one tipped to struggle at the start of the season, and yet we got hammered off them. And again, that was not because, I mean, we were both at the game. If you remember, I don't think it was because Barnsley had better, had better players. It was just that they wanted it more once they scored. That was purely it. That was why uh, Sheffield United, albeit they're doing well, that's great for them. But 
I thought, I mean, you mentioned, I mean, the people have mentioned QPR being the worst team to come up the stadium. I still firmly believe Sheffield United are up there. Yeah, they're doing well, but in the context of that game alone, I thought that was one of the poorest teams I've seen come up here. And yet you can say, what does that say about us if we lost to them? But, you know, I can't ignore the fact from Grayson's perspective that, correct me if I'm wrong, he used to be a defender, yet why have we not kept a clean sheet? I'd have expected at least three or four clean sheets by this point. Yes, I'd, I'd have expected about, well, probably more clean sheets, if I'm honest. Yeah. I have high expectations. But coming in the championship with the defenders that we have, I, I expect to be keeping a lot more clean sheets. Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, I don't think it is high expectation. I think the fact that, you know, expected to have clean sheets with some of the players we've got, you know, you look at um, Jones, made a career for himself in the Premier League, really. Whatever people think of him, he's played in the Premier League most of his career. Oviedo, same. O- O'Shea, same. Kone proved in the Premier League what he could do. I mean, obviously, last season, hardly anyone tried that year, I believe. But in a general context, Kone's a lot better than he's showing. Um, you know, there's a lot of... So I, I just think on paper, I mean, look at Matthews. Even though people say it's only for Celtic, by the end of the day, he's, a cha- he's playing the Champions League. So... You know, he can't be that incompetent in the championship. He should, or they shouldn't be anyway. There's player, the defenders there on paper. I know the game isn't won on paper, but on paper they should be a decent championship back four, shouldn't they? Yeah, definitely. No, I totally agree. Which makes the point of how many do you think we'll concede on Saturday morning? Um, put it this way, I might as well put a bet on for a minus three goal handicap for Bristol City or something. That might tell you how many I think we'll concede. I don't know. Um. I mean, the fact is, yeah, in the last three games, we've drawn each of them, which is a positive, or at least one positive. We didn't get beat, but we're still letting six goals. So, you know, and it's and a lot of them have been sloppy mistakes. And that's the thing, because I firmly believe if we keep clean sheets, we would we would storm up the table. I really do, because I do believe we've got the attacking players to hurt a lot of teams in this division. Um, I think you look, we've got Graben, who's proven in this league he can do. Maybe not 20 goals a season. Yeah, that's fair enough. But I think he would certainly get double figures in this league. I'd expect him to. McGeady, we know how good he is for this league. McManaman, decent for this league. Williams, good for this league. Catmull and Dong are another two, actually, that I think should be doing better than they are. But obviously, they're not attacking players. Um, I'll tell you what, actually, I mentioned Catmull and Dong, so we're sort of like leading one point onto the other guy. So sorry if it appears to be a bit random. The Catmull and Dong debate, right, what's your take on that? You've mentioned how you feel about Catmull before, um, that you obviously feel like he should be dropped. What do you think about Dong? I mean, do you think, certainly at home, should we be going for like a two holding midfielders or do we go for one? And in which case, if the second option, who do you drop if you play either of them? Um, I'm firmly the second option. Um, Catmull can really go and sit on the bench for me. I, I, he just hasn't done it this season. Endong, I feel a bit sorry for Endong. He's trying to do two people's work, really, in that midfield, which mm. makes him makes his job even harder. Probably puts more pressure on him. Um, but for me, they can't play it together. It, it, it's going back to something like the Lampard Gerrard situation. Very similar players. I, I, I would really be uh, putting McNair in there. Yeah, that's an interesting one actually because a lot of people have said that um, when McNair's fit, we should be trying to go to get him back in the team. So, I mean, he's obviously he's built himself up, hasn't he? He's bulked up. So, I would imagine that maybe that's the idea. You've got to remember as well in the article that Scott Wilson posted a couple of weeks ago uh, about the fact that was Corney and Dong and Rodwell are three players that we would look to sell in January if other short still hasn't sold the club. I'm wondering if the aim is to try and get McNair in and establish him as the main defensive midfielder, or if you're playing in a two, to McNair and Catamol and sell and Dong. So I would, but then you'd wonder if Grayson would be playing him, I suppose. You don't want to risk him getting injured. Um, there's all sorts of things up in the air, but I would certainly agree that I think McNair is one that could go in there. Not entirely sure if he's ready yet, mind. It depends. I don't know how many, how many games he played for the under 23s. I think he's played two, but for me, I think as soon, uh, you know, as soon as we need a call on him, we need to get him in. It's that it, it's got that desperate now that we need a change. Yeah, that's fair enough. Well, okay then. So, well, I'll tell you what then. Well, the next bit we'll try and move on to. Um, I think I said if I haven't, if I touched upon this earlier, I apologise. But like I said, Bristol City have barely lost any games this season. And if I remember correctly, I think they've only lost two matches in the league this season. I think. I'm not entirely sure about that. You're right, You're right Michael. Um, oh, okay, in which case, yeah, it's Brisker against Birmingham. And obviously they got beat 3-0 off Leeds last week. They had a key player sent off, apparently. But again, they've um, appealed that decision and they've got him fit. I can't remember who it is, actually. I need to have a look at that. So apologies for the poor research. But I would ask, what would you say that your team is ahead of um, Saturday's game? What, who would who would you personally pick out of what's there? I'd go Ryder. 
a steal. It's a nuisance. He really is. Not be much on the guy. Um, left back of the year door. Jordan's right back. Um, mm. In the middle, I'd have Mushy and Browning in a bit. If Browning is a bit, I suppose you've got to go with Cordia because there's limited options. Fair enough. Um, what happened to Mark Wilson, actually, sorry, before you before we continue? What's happened to him? Has he just been out injured for a couple of months I now? I think he's been injured, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Right, go on, continue, sorry. Midfield? Um, McGeady, left. Um, Endong. Uh, uh, who, who can you put in there instead of Catamore? You know, that's a really tough... It's a really tough one. Defends, um, it depends on what formation you play. Because you remember there's Williams in there as well. Um, yeah, you could put Williams in there. Yeah, but I mean, you probably have it mid, uh, Williams in a more advanced way. You could play like a 4-1-3-2 or something. I think that would... If you had like Ndong... Sorry, I've completely cut you off here. But then um, you could have Ndong in a slightly deeper position and sort of sweep everything up. And then have Williams go forward with McManaman and McGeady on either side. That's what I'd better... You know, that's what I'd personally do. But anyway, this is your team, not mine. No, so I probably... think I'd agree with you, Michael. I think I would agree with you. Okay then, and would, yeah. would you put two up top then? No, I'd, I'd put Robin just in front of maybe Williams. Mm. I'd have Williams just there behind Robin, I think. I'd, I wouldn't play a board up with them, obviously. And I'd play one more out wide, I think. Fair enough. I, awesome. I, th- I, th- I, th- I think what more is more effective in the wide positions at the moment. Yeah, I'd agree. Honestly. I wouldn't certainly say that what more could be up top. So what would you say is... What, so it depends. Would you were you try and figure out a way to incorporate Williams, McGeady, McManaman, and what more all in the same eleven? Yes, I would because I think we need to go help the eleven really. I'm honest. Yeah, I well, think we need to obviously get the first goal. Yeah, well, obviously those players enough, irrespective of where Bristol City and are in the league, it's still Bristol City. Those those players themselves should have enough to cause to cause Bristol City problems. They should have enough to cause any team problems. But I will, I'll slightly, will not be on too much longer, but what I want to say is we'll slightly preview Tuesday. Um, I'll be occupied otherwise for this game, so I won't be, I'll be um, otherwise elsewhere. But how, irrespective of what happens on Saturday, because obviously it's hard to say because we don't know what's going to, what's happened yet. But how would you say, how big is Tuesday? Like, well, monumental, monumental game for the club. Could really change, you know, the way that the club's moving. Hmm. It's that big. I mean, we get three points in that game. I mean, regarding Birmingham and the Burton games, um, the games that they have at the weekend, you could potentially move out of the relegation zone. So it's pivotal, and it leaves Bolton down there as well. And if Bolton win on Saturday, we lose. That's nine points each. That's you know what I mean. That's yeah, that's nine a... points each, and that's gonna it, it's a big game. It's a huge game. Yeah. That's it. It is because Bolton are the only team at the minute. So Bolton, how could you? The only team that's below us at the moment. But again, because of the fact that in some ways, I don't know whether we could probably, I'm not entirely sure whether we could benefit this game being away or not. Because Bolton have actually improved in their last two games. At home, they beat they, um, last beat Sheffield Wednesday and then they drew against QPR at the weekend, but were leading for like half the match. So I'm not entirely sure whether we'd be better off actually having it be at the Macron Stadium. But it's... It's, I, mean, I, I, I think we would benefit from it being away, um, obviously just because of our home form, and then the pressure would be on them to, to win. Mm. But um, we need to break this duck at some point, we really do, so why, why can it not be Saturday or Tuesday? I would prefer it to be Saturday going into the ball and game. Yeah, you prefer to win both, but yeah, I don't well, think... If, I... we, if we win both, then that puts us on 18 points. Yeah. <laughs> it puts us on... Uh, I was going to say, yeah, if we went on X3, that's it my, does. That, that's just my maths. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, what I was, what I was going to say was, right yeah, well, what I was going to say was, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to touch too much on Borough yet, um, other than the fact I have stupidly decided to go and pay for a ticket to the game, so no, that, that's probably 30 quid down the drain. But if we did, we were to win on X3, you know, we would, we would shoot up the league, I'm convinced of it. We would be in a mid-table position at that point. Um, and then who knows what the atmosphere could be like then. That's the thing about this league. It could be two results away from changing. But like Pete said after the Brentford game, we don't know how long it is until, oh, oh it can still change, can still change, because it might get to a point where it's too late. So, and we obviously hope it doesn't get to that point. As far as Tuesday goes, yes, it's a huge game. Um, I would say, irrespective of what happens on Saturday, even though again on Saturday we could really do with a win, and we certainly could do with a clean sheet, because like I said, I'm sick of conceding, I'm sick of fed up of leaking in goals. 
for me, like I said, I'm on the fence about Grayson. I do believe that, again, because of the fact he wanted to be here, I do think that's a good attribute for him, for him staying. And I think, again, if we were to sack him, obviously it's the old argument, who would you get in? And people say that's not our responsibility to pick the next manager, but it's also not our responsibility to want to sack Grayson either. Um, there's an easy, it's, 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 I suppose in a way it's an easy thing to say, who would you bring in? But it is a genuine answer, genuine question rather, who would you bring in at that point? But for me, if we were to get two poor results out of the next two home games, I would look to probably change. Because like we said before, the manager we've got now, the players we've got now, we should be doing a lot higher, be a lot higher than this. I mean, Especially I'm, if we get beaten that ball, yeah, that, that's it. That's yeah, for, for me, that would be the final yeah, straw. If we lose at home to Bolton, I think that's that's got to be curtains for him. I'm blessed. And look, don't get us wrong. I don't actually, I don't want Grayson to go because I do honestly believe that the bloke wants to be here. I like his attitude. I like what he's. I like some of the things that he said early doors. It's easy to say, yeah, but I, I liked it. I liked the fact he was optimistic, especially after what David Moyes was like last season. But you, you can't ignore again. You can't. I keep repeating myself, but you can't ignore the fact that this team shouldn't be second bottom. You know. Um, right. Well. To try and wrap it up, then Ben, let's see if you can get. Let's try and see if we can get some cold hard predictions from you for the next two games, if you even right. if you even want so, to at this point. Yeah. To me, I'm like I said, go, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Sunderland one, Bristol City two. Or yeah, I, I can we'll see why. Bolton. So I'm gonna go Sunderland two, Bolton nil. We'll get our first clean sheet. You think we'll keep a clean sheet? I don't know what yeah. you've been taking, but I'd like some of it. Um. At the minute, uh, I, uh, about a few weeks ago, I was adamant we'd beat Bolton. I think now that game's going to be a draw, and I think we will, at best, scrape a draw to Bristol City. But for me, out of the next two games, anything less than four points is unacceptable. I think you need to target at least four. Uh, I think if ideally, if you beat, but even if you got like five points from the next three, and say you beat Bolton and drew against, you know, Bristol City in Middlesbrough. Going to the national break on an unbeaten record, on an unbeaten run, it's not actually, it's not a bad thing at the end. It's not the end of the world. Don't get us wrong, but yeah, I'd say probably one point. I think we'll, I think we'll draw against Bolton because I think Bolton, Bolton have improved recently. I mean, however we do it, as long as we're out of the bottom three in the next three games before the national break. That says a lot. That, that. that says a lot how far we've fallen, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. You know, we've fallen at the point where we will take a draw at home to Bristol City. We say, oh, just as long as we're out of the bottom three of the championship, but. I think it's safe to say that, barring some miracle happen, there's not a chance in hell we are going to go up this season. I think that was written off for about a month, about a couple of months or so now. Um, all right, guys, look, we'll leave you to it. I am absolutely desperate. Come on, guys, we need. To, I say this every week, but you need to see a win at some point. All right, thanks again, Ben, for joining us. Yeah. Have right. a good one, guys. See you later.